Hey, what's going on everybody? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure Cisco equipment for use in your home network. A lot of people when they're studying for like CCMP, CCNA, any of the Cisco exams, they kind of want to get their hands on some physical equipment and throw that into their network at home so that they can practice for their exam on it. But a lot of people also want to use that equipment as their actual home networking equipment. So basically replacing their home router or anything else they had to connect to the internet at home with this Cisco equipment that they can now practice on. However, when you're studying for certifications, it doesn't really, there is no section that's like, this is how you're gonna configure a Cisco device for use at home. That's not really something that is covered. The concepts that you'll use to do so are covered, but it's kind of up to you to put these together and figure out how to actually use this on a commercial ISP in your basement. So I'm gonna be going over how to configure the router in this video, make sure it connects to the internet. Um, there might be more videos after this that goes over like some switch configurations or something like that. I'm not really sure where I'm gonna go with this uh, video right now. So just be on the lookout for more with different configurations. Now, let's just go over the topology here. So if, if you're unfamiliar with my videos using this EVNG emulator, this is basically just emulated on a server. These are not real devices. It's basically GNS3, if you know what that is. And I'm just simulating an internet connection with a false public IP. So up here is basically my internet emulation. And then down here is what we're gonna be configuring. You can look at those as the devices you brought home to practice with. So it's assumed that there's a modem between uh, your router and the internet. Basically your Cisco router is gonna connect into your modem that is then connecting into the internet. Now the way we're gonna test all of this is with this uh, Linux virtual machine. It's running Slacks. It's not a Windows machine or anything like that, but it's good enough to test if this home configuration is going to work or not. Now, what are we gonna to need to set up here on our Cisco devices in order to make it work in our home network? Well, if you know a little bit about your probably existing home router, you know that it's got a few different services running on it and it's super user friendly. Cisco equipment is not, so we're gonna to have to put in configurations for all of these services that your home network is already providing. So you're gonna to need to set up a DHCP pool for all of the computers in your house. You're gonna to have to set up NAT manually so that your IPs are translated for use on the public internet and you can use more than one device. And we're gonna to have to point everything to a public DNS server. So all of these we're gonna to have to configure manually on router one. So let's go ahead and just hop into uh, the configuration here. So this is assuming that you just basically plugged in your router into your network and you're consoled into it. So we're going to skip the initial configuration dialog and that's going to basically finish the rest of the router booting. So we'll wait on that for a couple seconds. And here we go. Now when you first connect this up to your modem, the first thing you're probably gonna wanna do is change the host name. However, I'm gonna go ahead and say don't do that. The first time I did this on a charter connection, charter actually would push some configs that would change the host name of my router and the router would not work without that host name being changed to whatever charter wanted it to be. And what it changed it to was actually a host name that just said the public IP of my connection. So if you already have a router that's kind of pre-configured and you want to throw it in there, just be aware it might not work because of something that I don't understand that the ISP pushes. So we're going to start completely from scratch. And the first thing you're going to want to do is configure your internet facing interface. So in this lab, I connected up ethernet uh, 00 to our modem. So if we go into configure terminal, internet or e interface ethernet zero zero and we're going to do an ip address of dhcp on it most home connections are dhcp if yours is different there's going to be some different commands but i'm just assuming that you're on a regular dhcp connection here and we're going to no shut the interface and that's really all we need to do to that internet interface unless you want to get squirrely and add a description of internet to it we'll exit out of this we have a message here that says we got an ip address so there's our uh, public IP, which is not an actual public IP. That's just one that's been made up by me for use in this lab. If we do a show IP interface brief, we can see it on our internet uh, interface here. Now, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is set up our LAN interface or basically a default gateway for our network. So I connected ethernet zero one uh, to our home switch here. So if we give this an IP address, private IP, we'll just say we're gonna use the 192.168.1.0 network and 1.1 .1 is gonna be our default gateway. Just assign this IP to it and no shut the interface. 
And this is going to be the address that we're going to SSH to if we want to remotely manage this uh, later. So we're going to exit out of that and we're going to create a DHCP pool for our home network. So IP DHCP pool, we'll just name that home and then we'll do network 192.168.1.0 and we're going to assign a default router or the default gateway for all of our hosts of 1.1 interface ethernet 01's ip and we'll assign dns servers we can add as many here as we want really but we'll just use google's 8.8.8.8 and we'll do 8.8.4.4 i think that's a google secondary so now we have a primary and a secondary dns server to hand out to our home clients and that's all the configuration we need to do in the pool now what we can do is add a dhcp excluded address of 192.168.1.1 and we'll just exclude the first 10 just to make sure there is no overlap in our DHCP reservations for hosts and our actual networking equipment. So at this point DHCP in your network should be running. So let's just go ahead and kind of test this. We'll leave the router for now and we'll open up our Linux box here and if we go to we'll just do a terminal and see if we have an IP address. So I have config Yep, it looks like we were assigned um, an address of 192.168.1.2. So this pulled a DHCP address before we entered in our exclusions. All right, if we go to the network and uh, we disconnect this and connect it, we should be able to reset our DHCP address. So there we go, obtaining IP address, and it looks like we got 192.168.1.11. So we are now outside of that exclusion range on our home desktop. Now what we're unable to do here is going to be browsing to anywhere on the internet because we have not configured NAT yet. So if we open up Google Chrome, this should go nowhere. And yep, doesn't look like it's going to work. So let's configure NAT on our router now. With NAT, you've got to specify an inside and an outside interface, as well as a list that says what networks you're going to want to translate. And then you're going to tie it together with a NAT statement, telling it to perform overload on your outside interface. So let's just jump to our interfaces here. So Ethernet 00, zero is our internet etherface. So we're going to put the command of IP NAT outside on that one and then we'll go down to ethernet 01 which is our LAN interface and put IP NAT inside. So that's telling the router which one is our local network and where we're translating it to on the outside interface. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tell it which networks to perform NAT for. So if we create an access list, so IP access list standard and give that a name of NAT, we can put in a permit statement for our local network which is going to be 192.168.1.0 and then a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255. So once the NAT process sees this access list and sees the traffic coming through is coming from that network that we just defined, it's going to perform NAT on it. Now anything else, if you have another network configured, it's not going to translate that. So nothing is going to actually work on the internet if it's not a part of that network. Now you can put whatever network addresses you want in this access list if you want NAT to take a look at it. But let's just exit out of that and tie it together with our NAT statement. So that's going to be IP NAT inside source list NAT and we're going to specify an interface which is going to be our outside interface Ethernet 00 and use the overload keyword to make it perform pat on it. And we will write this and at this point, our Cisco device should be functioning much like our regular home networking devices. So let's go back to our Linux box and see if we can go anywhere on the internet. Looks like Google kind of loaded. I don't know if that's a cached copy or not, but let's just go to, uh, well, it's tax time. So irs.gov refund. And here we go. Internet is working. So you now have network access through your Cisco device. It's basically all there is to setting up your Cisco router as your home network router. Now there's a whole bunch of other configurations you can put on there if you want, but those are the bare minimum basics. And we didn't do anything with our Cisco switch. That's just a dumb switch, everything in VLAN one, but our router is up here functioning like a regular router. And what would you, what you would do on your home internet or <laughs> home network, you would connect all of your other devices off of your switch. If you want wired connections, 
So that's really all there is to getting this off the ground. I'm going to end the video here, and I think in the next video I'm going to show you how to set up VLANs and kind of segregate your home network into multiple networks using these Cisco devices. So thanks for watching this video, and hopefully you get all this working good. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and I'll get to them later. But other than that, have fun networking.